let's talk a little more about work. Um, and note that the kind of work we're talking about is mechanical work. And it's a little bit more, it's, it's different than the, what you would normally think of as work. And so we'll see why. So let's say I hire you to move some boxes across the room. So let's say the size of the room is D. And what I ask you to do is just lift the box up. Um, you know, so we'll lift each box up, some height H, carry it across the room to the other side, um, and then you'll drop it back down a height H. Okay? Um, and so, of course, we know that we're going to do work when we do this, right? Because to lift a box up, I have to apply some force F. And while I'm lifting it up, F is going to be in the direction of H. Okay? So what I, what I tell you is that the force that you're going to be lifting the box up with, F, um, times the height that you're going to lift at H, we'll say that, I, that you're doing it with such a force um, that, it's going to, that that's going to be equal to one joule. And then what I tell you is I say for every joule of work that you do, I'm going to give you um, I'm going to give you a hundred dollars. So you feel pretty good about this deal, you know. You count it up, and there's about you know there's about ten boxes. So just for picking up boxes and moving them to the other side of the room, you figure that you're going to make about ten thousand dollars. So you're pretty stoked. That's a pretty sweet deal. So you lift up the first box. Okay, so you've done a jewel of work, and so then I hand you $100. And then you start walking across the room. So you move across the room, you go all the way the whole distance D, you get over there and you're, okay, you're like, okay, I want to be paid for that work. I say, aha, but remember, the work is the integral of F dot dr. The force that you're applying is only upwards, right? You're, if, you're, if you're walking across the room at a constant speed, you're not actually doing any work because there's no force to do that. So um, you know, once, you, once you get the box moving, there, there may have been some initial force to get it moving, but once you did, you're moving the entire time. But then when you stopped, you had to apply an equal force to stop. Uh, so when you did that, that negated your beginning force. So you actually didn't do any work in moving the boxes from one side of the room to the other. But you're like, okay, well, that, that's okay. I made $100, you know, for carrying the box over. And then you lean over and you put the box down. And then I quickly reach into your hand and I grab $100 from you. And you're like, wait, well, what happened? Well, you just did negative work because you just put the ball down now. You did negative work. So you have to give me $100 back. So now all of a sudden you realize that I tricked you that I made it so that you're going to move all these boxes over to the other side of the room and in the end you're not actually going to get any money because for all of the work that you do lifting it you're going to do negative work on the other side putting it down um, so in total you're not actually doing anything um, but you're a bit, little bit more clever than that because what you realize is that when you bring the next box over instead of putting it on the ground you stack it on top of the box before that and then you stack the next one on top of the box before that. And all of a sudden you've stacked all 10 boxes, one on top of the other. And, you know, and then I realized, oh, you actually found a way to get, you know, not just $10,000, but more than $10,000, more than $10,000. So then you actually ended up tricking me. Um, and so this is obviously kind of a silly example, but I think it shows the difference between what you normally think is work and what's really work. Because normally you would think that here, while you're, even if you're just holding the box, right? If you're just standing right here, holding a box, you know, your arms would get tired, especially if it's a heavy box after a while, because you can feel the box pushing down on you. So you're obviously hold, pushing, have a force up holding the box. There's a force pushing the box down, but because there's no net force, because your force is a vector, you're not actually moving the box anywhere. It means that you're not actually doing any work because without movement, you can't have any mechanical work being done on the system. Well, because your arms are getting tired, you're obviously losing energy. 
right? We know that's true. So where's the energy going? Are we losing energy? Well, we are, but it's all chemical energy. Um, and so that's a bit more advanced. In fact, some of you probably know a lot more about that than I do. Um, but the basic idea is, you know, that, that all of the muscles in your arm are using up energy just to hold the box there. Um, and so that's where all the energy is going. So you're not actually doing any work on the system, um, even though your body is losing energy.